There are not many people alive today who can remember this soda on this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. When I first picked this bottle up, I thought it said True Me, so I wasn't having any luck finding stuff on it. Not the best design, in my opinion. I mean, it's a pretty cool Art Deco bottle, just you can't really tell right away that that's a Y. But it didn't take long before I saw that it says Try Me at the bottom. It's a very heavy bottle, it weighs over a pound, and the manufacture date on this one is 1932, and it was made in Tampa, Florida. Peter Kikinis was born in Greece in 1885. He came to America in 1902, and he lived in Savannah, Georgia. He worked at a few bottling companies, and then in 1924, he moved to Alabama to start his own bottling company. Try Me was an early 20th century soda pop culture phenomenon. That's what one website says. The company was active from about 1924 into the 1960s. It's unclear when it actually discontinues though. Its headquarters remained in Birmingham, Alabama, but had bottling plants from Maryland to Florida and westward to Texas and Oklahoma in the 1920s and 30s. Try Me had many flavors, including cream soda, Dixie Cola, ginger ale, golden orange, root beer, and lots of fruity flavors. And in the 1920s, a bottle of Try Me went for five cents a bottle. At some point, he picks up Clarence Comadi and Nicholas J. Peters as co-partners. In April of 1925, when they were opening up a Try Me bottling plant in Washington, D.C., there was a one-half page in the local newspaper giving the names of their drinks and letting the public know that everyone was invited to their grand opening from 1 o'clock to 6 p.m. The newspaper ad read that you can't spend a cent. The next day, the newspapers reported that Try Me serves 8,000 drinks during their grand opening. I see Kikanese started a PK bottling company, and there is one bottle that pops up on the internet from PK Bottling. The patent on this bottle is 1928, so this is after Try Me was up and running in several locations already. But there is no information about this company, so I guess it's short-lived. By 1930, Kikanese moved to Washington, D.C., where he lived out the rest of his life as the president of the Try Me Bottling Company until he died in 1953. He was 68. Clarence Komadi was born in Egypt in 1886. Not sure exactly when he comes over, but he's an American citizen on his World War I draft papers, dated 1917-1918. I found a court appearance where Clarence Kamadi appears on behalf of Try Me Beverages. It was some dispute with New Grape over some bottles. He dies in 1951 in Savannah, Georgia at age 65. Nicholas J. Peters was born in 1893 and stayed in Savannah, Georgia his whole life. He served briefly in the military. He worked as a bookkeeper until the 1910s, and by the 1920 census, he's a manager of a soft drink establishment. He died in 1941 at age 48, and in the 1940 census, right before he dies, it shows that he is still manufacturing flavored syrups. So he stays in the business until he dies. So I guess him and Clarence Kamadi were managers of the Savannah location since they were both in Savannah. They patent this bottle in 1926. It has all three guys' names on this patent. The Richmond, Virginia plant was owned by a local beverage bottler, Brown's Distributing. They were already bottling for a few other soda companies, and then they added Try Me Bottling Company to its distribution. Browns used this facility until 1981. The property was sold in 1985. Today, 1623 West Main Street still stands, 
Portions of the old bottlers' buildings were modified and developed. Now it houses an art gallery for local artists. Even though this brand stayed on the market for over 30 years, it's not that well known. I cannot find a lot out there for this company at all. I don't know the reason it fizzled out in the 60s, possibly because all the partners were dead by the 50s and maybe there was nobody to keep it going. I really don't know. Well, hopefully you enjoyed learning the little bit that there is known about the Try Me Soda. It makes me sad that something that was around until the 1960s, that so little is known about it. Anyways, it's still a really cool bottle nonetheless. And that's it for this episode. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.